What's going on guys, I'm Noam Player here and today once again we're going to be talking about some more Destiny 2. So a lot of very strange topics I want to go over today but all pretty interesting. Basically all the most noteworthy things that have happened recently that you may have missed because things are obviously pretty quiet for this game if you didn't notice. But I wanted to go over some pretty strange images of an unreleased Destiny 2 cutscene that came out. There's also some stuff about Destiny 1 content the next expansion and season 3 for this game. So as usual, if you want to support the channel then a like rating would be much appreciated and let's jump into it. Okay, so I want to show off a bunch of really strange images of an unreleased cutscene of Destiny 2. I guess it's an early version that they didn't go with, but multiple times on this channel in the past, obviously we've looked at a bunch of concept art, unused cutscenes, and alternate versions of things, which are pretty interesting to see. But most of the time this comes from Bungie artists who put their work on portfolios, and sometimes when they're supposed to, sometimes when they're not, and it gets taken down. So you're probably familiar with Blur Studios, who make a bunch of Destiny 2 and a bunch of gaming and general cinematics. They make a lot of cutscenes you've seen. This stuff is from an artist called Chris Beer, who I believe is the artist who made a lot of this work or at least contributed to it and again obviously this isn't fan made or some random artist that has nothing to do with Bungie this is the official studio called Blur who makes a lot of Destiny 2's cutscenes. So what you're seeing is basically an alternate version, a much darker and more kind of intense version of that Traveler's Dream cutscene when Ghoul kicks you off the tower but it starts off with a few very strange images of I guess the Guardian being dead or awakening and then almost immediately you can see one of the most interesting images I've never seen before of those darkness triangle ships but it is pretty significant and we'll get back to those in a second but moving on there's some pretty dark images. The next one is of a bunch of like kids I guess drowning and being like suffocated. It's a very strange image and there's like this face coming out or being submerged in this black liquid. You've got some sort of raven or a crow made out of these black wires or I guess more darkness. You've got this ghost being basically consumed and like taken over by this black liquid again. It almost looks like Siva in the background but there's no like red nanites everywhere so I'm not sure if it is Siva. You've got another very creepy looking human face and then it kind of gets into the part of the cutscene we've seen before with those triangles falling into the water. There's an early version of the Leviathan like eating a planet which we see but in a different version and then it shows the supers with the Ark Strider staff and also that bird flying towards the Traveler which is on Io. So it's a lot of very dark and very creepy imagery not something you would imagine for Destiny 2 and obviously we have no idea why they cut this stuff but if I was to speculate I'd say it's probably because it's too dark. I know it's one of the biggest complaints about Destiny 2 but Destiny 2 is just nowhere near as dark and gritty as Destiny 1 was. So I don't know again this is just my guessing but I feel like someone said this is a bit too dark and a bit too serious for Destiny 2 so they cut it, which if that was the case would be very disappointing because this stuff looks really cool and this looks like Destiny 2, what I would imagine it to be. But going back to these pyramid ships or the triangle ships, the Doritos, the darkness, whatever you want to call them. Now it's pretty interesting because it's the first time we've seen them like this. There's basically one humongous triangle and then a bunch of tiny ones around it. So I'm guessing that's kind of the mothership that controls everything, but you don't see this at the end of the Destiny 2 cutscene. But I'm guessing this is supposed to represent the collapse. It's kind of like a flashback of it. Pretty much the first ever time we saw these pyramid ships was for Destiny 1 concept art years and years ago before the game came out and you can see them in front of I'm guessing an early version of the Traveler it kind of looks like a moon there with all the craters if you don't know the point of this entire cutscene is the Traveler basically giving you a dream this is when you died so after Ghoul kicks you off the tower the Traveler basically gives you this dream that's why it's called the Traveler's Dream and then it basically tells you with the bird to go to the Shard of the Traveler to get your powers back now if you're wondering why everyone calls these things the darkness and why everyone jumps that conclusion it's basically because these things we know cause the collapse but we also know the collapse was caused by the darkness so the two go hand in hand these things are pretty much the darkness. We also know that at the end of the Destiny 2 cutscene and Luke Smith said that stuff is years away so basically Destiny 3 and the stuff before in the cutscene is obviously the order of the DLC so you've got Mercury and then Mars and the Reef and then Saturn. Obviously we also know that Luke Smith said they basically cut the darkness out of Destiny 2 completely. Destiny 2 is supposed to be about the ghoul and the red war nothing about the darkness at all and then Luke Smith said that in the future i.e. Destiny 3 they're actually going to introduce the darkness again and properly flesh out a story for it. Again how that goes I have no idea but that is what they said about the darkness and future games basically. But yeah, I really do hope they add this kind of like dark and serious tone back into Destiny 2 because it's way too kind of lighthearted in my opinion. I always thought it was weird how Destiny 2 is the game where humanity got pretty much destroyed but somehow it's a super lighthearted version of Destiny 1. Somehow Destiny 1 is the more serious and dark and gritty game. But either way, I thought it was pretty interesting to share with you guys this unused version of this cutscene and let me know down below what you think of those pyramid ships. Pretty weird to see them for the third ever time I guess. So next up, a very weird topic, something very strange but a lot of you on Twitter and in my comments have asked me about it. But this is the idea that's been floating around of Destiny 1 being remade on PC, believe it or not. So where this came from is this image right here from NVIDIA. This is an official image on their website. NVIDIA are obviously a major partner with Bungie and with Destiny 2 for the game. But on the website, it's pretty funny. You can see a guy playing Destiny 1 on his laptop or the PC version of the Destiny 1 Crota Raid. So surprisingly, a lot of people have been speculating, saying, is Destiny 1 coming to PC? Are they remaking it? Is it possible they'll port the game over there and actually make a proper PC version of Destiny 1? So as much 
as I wish that was the case and I would love to see Destiny 1 on PC, there is 0% chances happening. So even though this is an official image from Nvidia, it's most likely just photoshopped and it's just for kind of marketing purposes. But regardless of the image, it's just not something Bungie would do. They wouldn't put Destiny 1 as a competitor to Destiny 2. Regardless of which game you prefer, or if you think Destiny 1 is better, which is definitely debatable, Bungie basically spent however long making Destiny 2 and they're not going to then go and say, here's Destiny 1 on PC, go play that instead. Again, as much as I personally, and I'm sure a lot of you would love to see Destiny 1 on PC, it would basically undercut Destiny 2 completely. So unfortunately, this is not a hint or a leak or suggestive of Destiny 1 being remade. In reality, it's probably looking very intensely at a blank screen and they photoshopped an image of the Crota Raid on top of it. So like I said, something pretty funny, but also very strange that popped up recently. Maybe one day in the future, they'll remake this game when Destiny 5 comes out. But for now, I don't think it's going to be happening, unfortunately. So moving on, Bungie also announced the last faction rally of this season. So the last one of season two. It's going to be starting next Tuesday on the 20th. And obviously all of the final weapons that haven't been sold are going to be available or inside loot drops. So they're going to be adding the new monarchy shotgun, the future war cult shotgun, and the dead orbit SMG inside the loot pool. So inside the engrams. And the final three weapons are, of course, going to be winning offerings. So you can see the future war cult sniper, the new monarchy grenade launcher, and a dead orbit sniper. You can always tell when Bungie wants a faction to lose because they're selling a grenade launcher. I think new monarchy have won like three in a row. So I guess their time's up. Nobody wants a grenade launcher. I mean, not like anyone wants a sniper either, but you can tell Bungie definitely does not want new monarchy to win. Now, like I said, this is going to be the very last faction rally of season two. So it's actually going to go away for quite a while while Bungie improve it. And then in May, it's going to return with a lot of improvements. So those improvements and their goals are going to be pledging to a faction that should be a more meaningful choice, which I agree. I always thought it was super pointless being able to pledge to all three factions because you can just pledge to all three of them and doesn't matter who wins. I mean, if you ask me, you should only be able to pledge to one faction per account. So your dead orbit or new monarchy for your entire account all your characters. If they lose, they lose and there you go. But it would actually make you care about it a bit more other than right now where literally nobody cares who wins because you have all three characters anyway. Now, they also said rewards should not be time gated, which I agree. I don't know why they did that for season two. Faction Rally should provide a unique gameplay experience and not simply be a layer reward on top of the existing game. I mean, as of right now, Faction Rally is basically an extra milestone and everything drops a few tokens. So yeah, they're definitely on point with this. They said the event should grant an additional insight into faction lore and goals, which I'm pretty glad they're actually including that. And they also said it should build upon player interest in lost sectors and armor ornament objectives. So those are basically Bungie's plans and what they've been working on for the new version of Faction Rally, which is going to return in May. And like I said, next week is going to be the very last time you see it in the very kind of bare bones version it is right now. Now, I'm pretty sure even inside season three, when it does return, the weapons are still going to be available. The only thing you definitely will not be able to grab will be the ornaments for the armor. So if you care about any of that stuff, if you want to get some, definitely get some next week because after that, they'll be impossible to get. And also the emblems, they're going to change over. So if you want any of the emblems, then again, make sure you grab them and pledge to any faction you need to. So let's take a look at the remaining six weapons, the three being added to the loot pool and the three being up for rewards. Spoiler alert, they're not that great. But regardless, this is the stuff up for grabs and these are the perks and the weapons. So the Dead Orb SMG, his main perk is Grave Robber, so enough said on that one. The new monarchy shotgun is in the aggressive frame, which is pretty bad. The main perk is Field Prep, increased ammo reserves, a faster reload when crouched. So we're going to move on from that one. Something that doesn't look horrifically bad is the future war cult shotgun. This one is in the rapid fire frame, which is pretty good. And it's got moving target, increased movement speed and target acquisition when moving while aiming down sight, which is pretty good. And it's also got steady rounds or flared magwell for increased reload speed. So it's basically the same thing as the Hawthorne shotgun. It's actually pretty decent. So this thing is probably the best out of three. And then going into the three winning weapons, it doesn't get much better, unfortunately. The dead orbit sniper is a vice rapid fire frame, which is pretty bad. It's got pulse monitor, auto reloads part of the magazine when the wielder is critically wounded. So not very good. The new monarchy grenade launcher, field prep, increased ammo reserves and faster reload when crouched. I honestly have no idea why these perks are even put in these weapons, but there you go. And then we have the future war cult sniper with the main perk being pulse monitor, auto reloads a part of the magazine with a builder is critically wounded. So like I did say, absolutely nothing to get your hopes up. These weapons are some of the worst I've ever seen in Destiny 2. So if you're interested in getting a bunch more than nice shaders and obviously the ornaments completed, then definitely worth hopping on. Otherwise, if you're looking for some crazy, amazing weapons, this is not going to be the faction rally for you. Now, a few other quick notes from Bungie about future updates. They said, we've been monitoring the response and gathering your feedback about all these sandbox and crucible changes we told you about last week. 
We've heard a lot of the feedback about in-air accuracy, which has been a big discussion. The Sandbox team let us know that for the upcoming Go Fast update, they're increasing the hip-fire accuracy and aimed out sight accuracy for hand cannons on consoles. They also said they would take another look at in-air accuracy and do some testing after 1.14 goes live. And then next week, they're going to share some more info about the update and also show off the unique Nightfall rewards. So we're actually going to get a look at what some of the Nightfall strike loot looks like, which is going to be hopefully pretty cool. So like I said, a lot of very strange topics, but that is everything I want to talk about with you guys today. As always, I appreciate all you guys watching, even though a lot of you don't play Destiny, you still support the videos, which is awesome. So if you do want to support the channel, then a like rating down below it would be much appreciated like i said anytime something happens for destiny 2 i'll keep you guys informed so make sure you are subscribed if you aren't already and in the meantime you can click the image on screen right now to watch a recent video i just made so as always i appreciate you guys watching and i'll see you guys in the next one